Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and I love to quilt and I love to be organized. So I'm going to take a panel and turn it into an organizer. To make this project I'm going to start with two identical panels. Now these panels are from Susie B's. What I like about them are the size of the squares and the shapes so that I can turn those shapes into pockets. So I'm going to need two panels and I'm also going to need a piece of fabric the same size as the panel and that's going to be for the back of the quilt. And one extra piece of fabric that's about the size of the panel and this is going to be turned into the back of pockets. Get a thread that you're going to be able to have that sort of blends into everything. And in this case I'm using Aurafil 2912. This quilt is going to be a quilt that you're going to be able to hang on the wall that has pockets on it. And it needs to be sturdy so that when you put things into it, it doesn't flop forward. And to keep it that sturdy shape, I'm going to use a foam batting. Now this is from Basel and it is a double-sided fusible, which means both sides of this you can fuse on so you don't have to worry about any basting. It's going to baste it for you. Basel is a foam and the foam has a piece of fabric on both sides of the foam. And in this case, both those sides are fusible. Because it is a foam, it holds its shape. The side basel that I'm getting is a 36 by 58 because that is going to fit that panel with one big piece. I won't have to piece it. When you take the basel out of the package, it's going to have these big wrinkles in it, but you cannot iron it flat because it is fusible. And if you do that, your iron is going to stick right on it. It will flatten out when you iron your layers together. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to iron the one panel on one side and the background on the other. Start and make sure your panel is wrinkle free and the background is wrinkle free. Put the backing down so that the wrong side is facing up. You're going to be able to lay the basel on first. I like to have that background fabric just a little bit bigger and by having that panel a little bit smaller than the background you're going to be able to see all the layers. Don't worry about cutting off any of the salvage yet. We're going to be able to do that right at the end. You can take this to the iron and you're going to be able to press these three layers together. And with both those layers stuck on you can now just trim off the extra of this basel. With the secondary panel we are going to make the pockets. We're not going to cut each square out, we're going to do the pockets in rows and stitch in between them to get the size that we want. And I'm going to do the top section first, then the bottom, then the center. So to start with that top piece, cut right down the center of this panel. And with the first piece cut out, we're going to square off that top. So it's whatever measurement you're going to be able to get out of this piece. I have an eight and a half inch ruler so that's what I'm going to use. The first row of pockets, I'm going to want the pocket top to come right near the top of this border. And because I don't want to waste fabric, I know that I'm going to need this much plus the seam allowance to add onto this piece. So I'm going to add four and a half inches. So I'm going to cut a strip of fabric and put it right on here at four and a half inches. Have your right sides of the fabric touch and stitch a quarter inch. When that piece has been added on, take the seam and press it open and flat. That's going to give it a nice flat finish. Now we're going to be able to take this fabric and fold it together so that the wrong sides are facing so you'll be able to see the good side. I like to starch the inside, then fold it over and press it. That starch is just going to help those fabrics hold together while you work on it. When it's been pressed, stitch these two layers together with a scant quarter inch all the way down. Once those layers are stitched together, you're going to fold in a seam allowance and press that seam allowance down. 
So on the back you have this little seam allowance. That fold line is going to be a stitching line. This is going to go on top of that panel now. We're going to be able to match up the two pictures together. When they're matched up together, we need to attach this seam allowance on top of the panel. There's a couple of ways we can do it. We can put a couple of drops of glue, or you can use a product like the Stema Seam. What it is, is it's also an adhesive, but it's going to put those two layers together. You can do this right at the ironing board, and right there where you have that seam allowance, you're going to iron down that tape. Once that has been ironed down, you're going to be able to peel off that top piece of paper, and that is going to leave an adhesive on that fabric. Now take it to the iron and iron that strip down. Or if you've used glue, just give the glue a chance to have that seam allowance stick right onto this main body of the quilt. The great part of having that little bit of a glue or an adhesive is when you flip that panel over, you're going to be able to stitch right along that press line and that adhesive is holding it in place for you so you don't have to worry about anything shifting. You're going to be able to stitch through all of the layers. Once that's been stitched down, when it's folded up, it's going to have a nice secure bottom. So anything that goes in these pockets, you know are going to be strong. I just put a couple of pins to hold it for now. The next set of pockets we're going to work on are going to be the bottom. Cut this portion off the same as you did the top going in between that picture and cutting a straight line. For the back of the pockets, you're going to need a piece at seven and a half inches, and of course, that width. Match right sides together, stitch your quarter inch, and then press that seam open and flat. When the seam has been pressed, you're gonna be able to take that and fold it, just like you did the other one. So you have the top of the pocket is going to be along here. When it's been pressed together, you're going to be able to trim off this extra so your pocket is going to be straight. I have found that eight inch works great for me. Stitch these two layers together with the scant quarter inch. All of the pockets are going to be stitched on the same way. So you can remove the back of the tape or if you're just going to use glue, it's still going to be done the same way. So you're going to match up the picture along the top and press this down. What you need to make sure is you're going to have enough room here that you're going to be able to square this off and put a binding on afterwards. Once this has been ironed on, turn the quilt over and stitch right along that fold line. Put two pins and hold it together. Now we can work on the center pockets. The center panel would make a very large pocket and if that's what you want, that's fine. It equals about 23 inches. If you're going to put books and papers in, that would get lost right in the bottom. So you can make two long pockets or three, depending on what you're going to want to put in those little pockets. I'm going to divide this in half. So I have two medium sized pockets. So I'm going to cut that panel right in half. When I make it sew these pockets back onto the quilt, I want to leave some space. If the pockets are too close, you have nowhere to put a hand, or if something is hanging out, it's going to overlap the top pocket. So I'm going to want to leave a space. So I'm going to have the top of this pocket going inside this border at about an inch. The top of this pocket will also go down about an inch. That's going to give me some space once I have that hem done for things to go in the pocket. So for the back of these pockets, you're going to need identical size pieces. And sew them along to the top and press them both flat. When I have the two top edges stitched and pressed down, I'm going to lay them over top of the panel. So I have the one pocket here and the second pocket. From here, you're gonna be able to adjust it. If you find you don't have enough space here, you can repress this and make a bigger space or less of a space. And you can do that for all of the tops of the pockets. Once you've established the top of the pockets are okay, 
you're going to be able to do the bottom of the pockets. If you have any leftover fabric, this is the time you can take it off. Don't take that extra off until you know you have the measurements that you want. It really is a personal preference on how big you want these pockets. Mine are about a nine and a half inch pocket before that seam allowance has been tucked in. So we need to finish off both of the bottoms just like we have done the other two pockets. And on the back side, you'll see we have the rows of stitching. We can now quilt it. We can just move the pieces out of the way and we can do any quilting we want into this area. So you're only going to quilt that section at a time, move the next pocket and quilt this section at a time so that all the pockets are going to remain open and free. These will get stitched down last. The quilting that I chose to do in between all of the pockets is just a gentle curve. They don't follow each other and they just go random all the way down. And I've done them for all of the pieces. So in the back it has this gentle curve. Now we can take all of these flaps and iron them up into the position they're supposed to be in and decide where we're going to sew the pockets. To sew the pockets, it's really easy. You just need to decide where you're going to put your stitching line. For the top and the bottom, I'm going to stitch in between each of these panels. I'm going to start at the bottom, stitch, back stitch, and that's just going to make it stronger. So I'm going to do the two rows here, and I'm going to do a row on each of the ends, and that is going to hold it down so when I do the binding, it's not going to flap and get in my way. For one of the center ones, I'm going to leave a big one and sew on each side of the panel and down those sides. And for the other one, I'm going to sew right down the middle and on each side. So I'm going to have two pockets, so it will change the size of the pockets. The bottom, right down the center and on the sides. The last thing is to be squaring it up and put a binding on. When you've trimmed it down, you will notice that the quilt is a little puffy because it is foam and not batting. It will be a lot easier if you squish this foam by doing a very small zigzag all the way around, just so that it's going to help take some of that puff and crush it down. Before the binding goes on, we need to add a sleeve along the back so that we're going to be able to hang this up. And I have a really easy way to make a sleeve. The sleeve will go at the top, but the sleeve is going to start with three 12 inch squares. Now if you only have enough fabric, you can do 11 inch squares, that's fine, even 10 inch. What you need is a large square. You're going to take it folded in half and press it so that the points are touching. And you're going to fold it in half again so the points are touching. On one side you're going to have all four raw edges and you're going to have a fold and the two edges match. You need three of these. You just want a nice straight edge with all of the four raw edges up at the top. And these triangles are going to go right at the top of the quilt. Just have those triangles match that raw edge and you have no problem overlapping that top piece and pin them down. Once they're pinned down, just stitch a row of stitching a quarter inch all the way along the top. When these triangles are sewn on, they're going to be covered with the binding. This little point here, all you need to do is take a needle and thread and just stitch that point down. No fancy stitching is required. You're just stitching this down so you've made this channel out of these three triangles and when the rod goes through it's going to be able to hold the quilt up and you still can have one of those rods that have the nice ends to them or they just slide to the level that you want. You can even add some buttons. It's a cute and quick way of putting a sleeve on the back of a quilt. When the triangles are done, you just need to add your binding on. And when the binding is all done, it's ready to be used. It could be used for office supplies, 
books and papers or if you're a quilter you could set up the pockets to fit your rulers and all of the things that you use for quilting. You can continue to add seams if you want to customize each of these pockets to fit something individual. And once it's hung on the wall, it will keep everything nice and clean. And with that foam inside, it keeps it nice and stable. And when you look at the organizer, you don't notice the pockets because the pockets blend right into the picture on the panel. That's what makes this panel so great to use. And just customize those pockets to fit exactly what you need them to fit. I'll put a link in the description to the Susie B fabric and the Basel foam inside. And most quilt shops will carry those products. I do hope you give this a try. It's quick and easy and it's a lot of fun to make. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.